Oh no! Since I didn't do it on the um, football vlog. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Wherever the fluff you are. Welcome to a catch up. Right. This one's just going to be a weirdy one. I'm just going to just like straight in. Since I didn't cover it in any some of the other stuff, um, medical. Uh, still no improvement with my ear as per usual been to see the hearing specialist finally since they uh, cancelled my appointment and then moved it three weeks over so they don't know what the f is going on they're not going to tell me what the fuck's going on either but then again that's per usual they know that there is a decrease in the hearing capacity or the auditory response it is marked, which can mean anything from 3% to 20%. It's not dramatic, but it is a marked decrease in the response, which, again, they won't tell me whether I'm safe to go to work or not. I'm already on the side of caution and not bothering with getting a, looking for a job yet, even though I really do want one. It's probably going to be easier if I don't go through all of that faff especially if I start a job and then turn around in a month or so time and just go sorry boss can't stay gotta go back on the sick no point going through all that argument and all that fluff so as far as I know I've got to go for an MRI this will be the second one that I've had in the past 10 years <laughs> I've seen that in the past six years if they do it before April it definitely will be um, in, the in the last six years that I will have had uh, two of them, which, yay, more time getting stuck in a polo cube, well not a polo, you know what I mean, big chube, that uh, sounds like a washing machine going on full cycle constantly, but her -da -her -da -her -da -her -da -her -da. and all that random shite, but hey, whatever, I'll just deal with it, yeah, these surgical steel mahunculans are going to have to come out my ears, just cause, otherwise I'll get wrapped out. But hey, whatever. So I don't know what's going on with that. So obviously, yeah, with me still being on the sick, um, things are going to be a little bit uh, more on the dune side. So yeah, it will be whenever I can get a chance to go watch football, I will go watch football. For those of you who are men who are asking, are you still going to be doing the rugby stuff? I will be trying to do either of them. It is a challenge to do one, let alone both. Especially when you don't exactly have a lot of money. Because I do have to pay for keeping my cell phone alive. And I've got to pay to keep the internet on in the house. You know, I do have household bills to pay as well. That does come out of uh, what pittance you do get from the government. But, you know... Let's just say this, 310 quid isn't exactly easy to flipping well live on. Yes, I live with my parents. I still have to pay bills. I'm not that goddamn lucky where they, they pay everything for me. I have to pay it. You know, I've got to pay out for the stuff that I use for my computer and my edit suite. I've got to pay out for my PSN. I've got to pay out for my game share. I've got to pay out for, you know, my game, not, not my game pass, but my... NFL, American football stuff. I've got to pay for the now TV subscription for the sport. Because sometimes it's the only way I can actually watch football and I can watch rugby and I can watch American football is that way. I stream it onto the computer, it's easier. Hence why I've got a dual screen. You know, so with that, that's how that works. Moving on to layer two. Boosh. Right. So since everything's going on about all of what's going on with the names and all of this and yada 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 for the the for the stadium, I've looked into a lot of different bits and bats and all sorts of stuff. The naming rights for the stadium, as far as I know, is the DW bit stays until a better one can be found. So if Talal and all of his owners group and all of his boys find one of their partners to name the place they will name the place yada yada whatever they decide to call it 
Who knows? At the moment, who knows? Because as far as I know, the DW is literally just now a placeholder for whatever it's going to be called. In regards to Boston Stand being renamed, my understanding of it and from what I read on there and all of the other stuff, I know this is going to be a wee bit late or quite a bit late for some of you, but the bits that I read, it is just named the Kingdom Stand or the Kingdom Group Stand for the football. It should still retain its name as the Boston Stand for rugby. This is as far as I know and from my understanding of it. If it has changed, then it's changed. It's very unfortunate, but this is the way that it all goes, especially when the football club practically owns the entirety of the place. So this is how it's going to be. It will probably still retain the Boston somewhere on there, but that's out of everyone at the rugby club's hands unless they just do a big deal with the football lads to sort it all out. More stuff's going to come in through sponsorship and all of that lot as well. Especially with all of that lot going on. Because, as we all know, the game isn't exactly that rich on the rugby side. Especially for league, it is a little bit more going to be that always, you know, the M62 corridor is what everyone seems to nickname it. Even though there is now the Cornish club. And then you've got more stuff going on up in Newcastle. Where they're looking at getting a bit more well known, a bit more traction onto it. And then you've still got what's going on in Cumbria with all of the Cumbrian clubs. They're doing well. And you've got some of the Welsh clubs that are looking into it. There's even rumours and little whispers around Scotland. So you never know. You might get a couple more Scottish guys coming through. So there's that. Yeah, this bit this is gonna be a bit of a a thing right now because from what I've just seen on a press release, St Helens have done a sponsorship deal with Home Bargains. I don't know if that takes over from the TAFO or what, but or is that a stadium deal? I don't know, they just said it came up as a sponsorship, so whether it is actually shirt sponsor stadium sponsor another sponsor across part of their stuff i'm not 100 percent familiar with how st helens do all of their stuff because i know how i'm i'm still not even 100 percent sure of how wigan do their stuff because they've got like the lot loman stuff and then they've got the preston the prestones and then they've got this one and that one and yap 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 they've got multiples going on in their sponsorships so there's all sorts of stuff in there so that and then there's the signing of the Brazilian lad. Uh, there's the Australian guys that have finally come over and done that. And then there's bringing in uh, Ian, I think it's Ian Thornley. He's come back because he was part of our squad at one point. And he went off, he was at Lee. And he's come back to us. Since we've mentioned Lee, Adrian Lamb. Now the head coach at Lee Centurions. Good luck, lad. Good luck. Three years that you was our coach, I wasn't all that buzz, buzz, buzz with it years ago, as I've mentioned quite a lot in the past. But over the time whilst I've lived in Wigan now, you were the coach that I've known. So when I came into it and started watching it properly in the stadium in, you know, very early 2019, and I moved into town in 2018, late 2018. And at that time, I was on a part-time job. And timing and all of that lot wasn't exactly brilliant for me then. But in early 2019, things changed. So I was able to um, have a quick wander over. And that first game was... The first game that I watched live in this stadium since I've lived here was the um, World Club Championship game against Sydney Roosters. So you've been the coach that I've known then. But 
it was a bit of a mess. It's been all right, and then last season, I don't know what happened. The wheels just fell off. But we still got into the playoffs. We still gave it a good go. Yeah, we had a lot of injuries and stuff like that. Whether there was... Whether there was fluff going on in the background, we don't know. But other than that, now we've moved on. We've now got our new coach and a chapter. But for the Lee lads, you've got a big, big deep thing to deal with. You've got a lot to prove. Especially after how things went on. Especially after the fact that some people were saying during the Wigan time, especially coming to the final few games, you did not look like you gave a rat's ass but a lot of the Lee fans Lee to be honest need a good, a good coach from what I know of rugby Lee have been there or thereabouts they've always been that they've always been one of those teams that is in the mix can trip you up can get you in can rattle you can give you a, a bit of a pasting once in a while even though some people will always say Lee is always going to be the Wigan B team because a lot of the players that don't make it into the main squad seem to trickle down and go to Lee. Same with some of them go off to Warrington or some of them will go to Leeds, some of them will go off to Hull. Whether that is with the Robins or what, I'm getting conf I'm confusing myself here, but whether that's going to be with Hull FC or uh, Kingston Rovers. You know, they always seem, Wigan have always had that thing. St. Helens at the moment have that cluster of young lads that are just coming through and they're constantly rolling, rolling, rolling. So St. Helens maybe have taken over that mantle now of what Wigan used to do as being the best place for the academy. I've seen a lot of the academy lads flowing through in Wigan and doing absolute pasters in other teams because they didn't quite make it. Whether it's because we have big names or what, I don't know. But, <clears throat> besides the point. Rolling it back to stuff with Stadium. So this has been a lot of back and forth of how do we make the Stadium better from all accounts and all sides. Especially with some of the things that I've seen with like the reports of the vandalism and the broken windows that come on on the um, away side and even on like the parts of the home side and stuff like that. How do we deal with that? Well, maybe during the time where Warriors aren't playing in the summer at the stadium, maybe knock out those windows, put in like, you know, some nice brick design or put, I you know, put like steel clads across it or something. Make it look good, deck it out inside. The other thing as well is with the new energy efficiency stuff that's going to be coming through. Why don't we have solar panels on some of the roofs? Or areas where you can have solar panels? Since I can tell that the light, some of the lights in areas are now moving to LED. From looking around the place, there's, different, there's some things that are coming on. Especially with a lot of the cold weather stuff, with some of the areas getting a little bit more thermally insulated. Some areas being looked at, some areas just having slight remediation. The clean up that happened, that was really good. Got rid of all of the all of the muck and all of the crap that was going on. Doesn't help because of the position, where it's got the river and the canal pretty much right by it, and then all of the other stuff that goes on because it, with the open sides as well, it doesn't help it. But that's beside the point. That just makes it a harder environment to go into. That's just part of it, but you know, maybe do that. Maybe if there is a way that you could do, I don't know, somewhere around the land plot, maybe get one of those little um, spinny boy turbine things. The one that stands up vertically and has the slight finial blades that just spins like that. Not the big propellers, just those ones spin like that. Because those ones might help a little bit as well. Plus with the solar panels that all bring down the efficiency. Plus the times that the stadium is not being used during the summer. And there is a lot of light. You're then putting that energy into the national grid. So it's feeding the surrounding area. 
because you could easily go into partnership with some of the other stores and whoever owns the retail part which I think is Fraser's group one of Mike Ashley's groups I think that if you could do a deal with them to maybe have some solar panels or solar areas or even those like vertical pylon um, turbine wind turbine things around to help out put some power into this so that'll be the green keys up there you know do that I don't know even with some of the banners and murals around the place as well do that sort out it's a bit difficult because of all the stores and the shops and everything else that comes down that all of the flow and everything you do have like you know you walkways and you do have all of that and the areas there it's bits and pieces that just make the place look a little bit shabby in regards to the room the things with the seat colors doesn't matter what color the seats are this is my thing i don't care whether the seats are red whether the blue whether the black whether the white whether the yellow whether the green whether the pink or purple doesn't matter seats are seats it's just bums on seats the argument about the seat colors it's moot to me don't care there are seats and areas in that stadium that do need a little bit of looking at with the seats because when i sit around sometimes i do get a seat which will just go straight through all those ones which are a bit stiff to push because they're a bit rusty some of them around are a little bit battered some of them have been sun bleached on the front so they're pretty much white on the front but the stark red or stark blue on the back of them there is that there is also the areas that do look like you know where the concrete patching is starting to show up a bit and where the edging painting isn't quite right it's just little touches which can always be changed but there's things that for the game day experience whether that be for rugby or for football there are some things in there that just need that little tweak that's all i really can't think of anything else to say apart from i will see you at the next game whenever that next game for me is well it's been me foxstar 1387 having a whine having a moan having a bitch having a ram Whatever you want to say, that has been me, and this is it. I'm saying now, peace.